ask you to turn your Bibles, please, to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews 11, and I'll begin reading with verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was, let me start back at verse 20. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months by his parents because they saw he was a goodly child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share the ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, accounting the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he looked unto the recompense of reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover, and the sprinkling of the blood that the destroyer of the firstborn should not touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea, as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do, were swallowed up. You read this in the life of Moses, and you realize that indeed faith was centered. And you can say, well, I want to see about the life of Moses. What about before he was born? That's why I'm saying, how does faith in the life of Moses, not his faith, we'll re begin with this faith of his parents. How does the faith in the life of Moses relate to me? As we look at the parting of the Red Sea, how does that relate to you? Other than someone saying that, that you know, they were immersed in the, the Red Sea, and that's baptism in the New Testament. It's an immersion. Yes, we can get some teaching from that. But the faith. He lived in different times. He lived in, a, in situations that God hasn't called us to lead people to their salvation. He's called Jesus to do that. Again, I ask you, how does that relate to your life? And I know it does. Because the Hebrew writer says, all of these people lived in faith. And by faith they did this, by faith they did that. And what they are in chapter 12, they're a cloud of witnesses. They're not exa examining you and said, rah, rah, you go, you go win the battle. You win, you win the, the war, you win the, the battle with the Satan. But they are witnesses because they lived by faith. And therefore, there must be some connection with his faith, regardless of the times that are different, that relates to you and me. I want to show you that it does. I want to show you that even in this reading, what Moses was dealing with related to us as Christians. So I know it relates to you and me as we live in our time, realizing that faith is indeed essential, just like it was in Hebrews 11, to be well-pleasing to God, that trusting, confident faith in God and His promises relates to us. I want to see with you this evening how that works. Faith in the life of Moses relates to my family, as my family deals with fear every every situation comes in our, our circumstances in life, modern times, ancient times, there was a problem with fear. Notice before he was born, by faith when he was born, he was hid three months by his parents. And what we see in Exodus, the first chapter, verse 16 and 17, is that here were the commandments of Pharaoh. Spare the children of Israel that are, that are, that are girls. But you're to, to kill the boys. The midwives did not go along with that because they feared God. And God was indeed pleased with them. And when this was not happening, this fire, the king of Egypt called for midwives and said, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men's children alive? And the, and the midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are lively and they're delivered ere the midwife come unto them. Were they lying? Was that situation ethics? Many think so. What if they're telling the truth? And yet we don't fear 
what was the commandment of the king. And yet, if this were true, and I believe it was, before the midwives could get there, the children of Israel, they give birth and they're gone. Why would you think that's a lie? It could be the truth, but see, fear and fleeing, I don't know how that relates. You should. We said Exodus 2, verses 3 through 10, that when he was born, he's got parents. You've got the midwives standing for watch riot, and we see in Exodus, the first chapter, that he gets worse and worse because before it's all over, we'll find that Pharaoh's telling his own people to kill the male children. His people to do that. Who will disobey that one? Well, the midwives were disobeying that. But here we come to the parents of Moses. And we see in verse 2, the, women, the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw that he was a goodly child. We'll see later when this point is made, a fair child, a goodly, fair child. She hid him for three months. But when the time could no longer occur that they could hide this infant, what do they do next? Go kill him? Have him killed? No, what they did, she prepared a basket with pitch and tar, put that out there and put it in the reeds and got the sister to see what's going to happen. They changed a little bit of their course, no longer staying there. But they didn't fear, did they? But they made plans to maybe keep him safe in a better way that they were doing. And we find that indeed what happened is that Pharaoh's daughter came and saw the baby. And it just so happens that his sister is there. He said, I'll go get a nursemaid from the, from the Jewish women to do that. I'll pay you wages. She got that and got Moses' mother. And that's how that worked out for them. And we've now get Moses when he's growing up. But I want to look at this. That when you think about fearing the king, not fearing the commandment of the king, what did they do? They didn't fear him and give in to doing what's wrong. But they made plans. They diverted things. Midwives did that. There indeed was a, a, a working around it, trying to, trying to stay safe. But they still not, did not fear in the sense that they would give in to that and have their babies put put to death. So here is the family important. And we see that in the life of Timothy. That here he had a mother and a grandmother before he comes along, before he's a babe. And they had a strong faith. And he says, having been reminded of the unfeigned faith, 2 Timothy 1, 5, that is in thee which dwells first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in thee also. What have these godly women, what had they done? In 2 Timothy 4, 15, when he speaks about the fact of, of what they had done, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 15, 2 Timothy 4, it's not 15. I'll get there in a minute. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 14. But abide thou in the things which I've learned and have been assured of, knowing of whom you learned them, and the sacred writings which were able to make thee wise in the salvation which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. How had he known those, those things? Because he had learned them when he was a babe. Verse 15, from a babe thou hast known the sacred writings which are able to make thee wise. All scriptures inspired of God. And even in this context, the, the Old Testament scriptures. Who taught him? A family member. And one of the things that can relate to our lives is the fact that in our family, we can have generation after generation of those who have faith in God, and they're not going to fear in life. 
when things are commanded them that are not right. They're not right to do. And they can become people who are not going to be fearful of those things. Hebrews, uh, the 10th chapter, and verse 23, we're to lay hold of fast the confession of our hope that it waver not, for indeed he is, he is indeed faithful that has promised. In 1 Peter 3 and verse 14 and 15, we're not to fear their fear. As we see there, we shall, not, we shall suffer for righteousness' sake. Blessed are ye, fear not their fear, nor be troubled, but sanctify in your hearts Christ as Lord. Give an answer for what is the hope that lies within you. And do so with meekness and fear. Fear what? Not the world's fear, but fearing God. Doing what's right, not doing what's wrong. And the command to kill your child was one that the midwives are not going to be a part of. And God was pleased with them. And he blessed those midwives. They weren't lying. They were fearing God than rather the commandment of, of, of Pharaoh. And here's what the parents were doing as well. Now what is interesting to me is to see that here is an example of fear and yet they're running for safety in the best way that they can. In Matthew, the 10th chapter, and verse 23, we'll find that Jesus had told his disciples that indeed, but when they persecute you in this city, flee into the next. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone through the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come, as he would come with the destruction of Jerusalem in the context. Flee, I thought you were to be strong and not fear the fear, just stand up and meet the consequences. Sometimes that happened, didn't it? There was no place to go to for safety. No longer would a nephew here in a prison cell for, for, for Paul, his nephew would hear about the plan to kill him and they would divert that. Fleeing for safety is not giving in to the fear of commandment of the authorities at hand. And we see that in COVID. It was commanded that we were not to assemble. We kept assembling. Our elders kept assembling. Some people said that wasn't safe. Did they do wrong when they thought because it's been told everybody's going to almost die? Was it wrong for them to, to not come that Sunday? No. They realized that this could be something that my condition and my parents' condition, it might not be something we do, but we had a commandment of God to come together on the first day of the week to break bread. And we did that. They weren't shutting down Walmart. They weren't shutting down Home Depot. They weren't shutting down bars. They're shutting down churches. And here's an example that we realize, well, we're going to reverence God and realize there was, say, we cut down our, our assemblies, but we met on the first day of the week those who were healthy and could assemble. We kept doing what God said to do. Not fearing the commandments of men. And you can criticize that. I don't criticize you for caring about your safety. That doesn't mean you lack faith. But here was an example that I want children to be born into families. That we put God first. We'll obey God rather than man. Especially with the hypocrisy of, of what people do. And realize, well, well, we'll be as safe as we can. But those who can, and we're continuing to do that, just like the population is today. And people get COVID in our congregation, we don't shut it down. We realize it's kind of like flu. And yet we experience that. You and I experience that. And we try to be safe, and we continue to do so but we keep the doors open on the first day of the week so we can gather together and break bread. We don't change God's law. We don't fear man. We fear God. We don't fear their fear. And that's what Moses' family did. 
when he was born into that family, they had a test. And God blessed them with a child. And he, when he grows up, he's full of faith. That's so why I'm just saying we can seek safety while continuing to fear God over man. That's what we did. Not knowing what lies ahead. And God has blessed us. And we continue to be able to, to keep those doors open. Without criticizing others who said we better not. But knowing that we please God. And I think that kind of family that doesn't fear the commandment of the king. When it goes against what God demands of us as his people. Yes, we'll respect safety. And we continue to make this place where we can come with safety and worship. On the first day of the week. For those who feel safe enough to come. And I hope our Faith will overcome our fears that we will want to be here and worship God. When Moses grows up, he makes some choices. And those choices may be remarkable to the world around him and around your world. So, well, I would in that situation. But how does it relate? Well, you make choices. I make choices. And what we see in Hebrews 11, verses 23 after verse 23 and verse, verse 24, by faith Moses, when he was grown up, refused, he made a choice. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather, see, it comes with a consequence. Didn't have to be this one, but this is what it related to. I'm refusing this, I'm choosing this. And remember, it's by faith he's doing this. I'm choosing to share the ill treatment with the people of God. People of God. Those are Israelites. My fellow Jews. Moses became 40 years of age. After growing up with Pharaoh's, all of the elite pleasures of this world. The wisdom of Egypt. He's 40 years old. Started as a babe. He spent all these years in that, but when he'd grown up, he went to see his people and how they were being treated. He killed an Egyptian who was doing wrong to an Israelite. And he was hoping that people would see that God's getting ready to deliver you. He hadn't seen the burning bush yet. God's getting ready to deliver you. And they didn't like it, so he ran. He ran for safety. Didn't mean he lacked faith. Didn't mean he didn't fear. He's going to do what God would have him to do, but he made a choice. I'm not going to be in that elite company of Pharaoh's family. Choosing rather to share the ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin, which was involved with Egypt and their idolatry and all of their riches and their covetousness. And I will do that for a season, a kind that the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Where did that come from? What do you mean? The reproaches of Christ. Oh, maybe he's a prophet and he's speaking in something he doesn't even know yet. Was Christ there at that time? This faith relates to you and me as Christians. That indeed we will suffer as Christians. Jesus addressed that in the Sermon on the Mount. And he talked about what's going to happen in the end. Kind of like... Moses was thinking on in his terms. But Jesus in that Sermon on the Mount, and I think you're well familiar with it, but we'll read it again. Blessed are ye when they shall reproach you and persecute you, when men do that, and say all men are of evil against you falsely for my sake, Jesus' sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets that were before you. 
That relates to you and me as a Christian. We make our choices. But what a choice he made. He didn't just say, oh, I don't want to be Pharaoh's daughter anymore, but, you know, Sudan, somebody else over there, but Ethiopia, I may want to get that connection. No. I want to share ill treatment with the people of God. And he expands that. Read rather suffer the reproaches of Christ than the pleasures, as having the pleasures of sin for a season because he looked at something far greater than what he's going to get on this world with Egypt. He made a choice. What is that? By faith? Because he trusted in God and his eternal reward. Imagine a faith that allows you to refuse the elite pleasures of this world for a principle and you're willing to suffer for Christ even if it means your death that's pretty ultimate ill treatment the reproaches of Christ and you don't waver you don't shrink with fear at the guillotine or the burning oven or whatever torture you have to go through. And all the pleasure that this world can offer, you have, you have principle. We've seen that involved with the people of, in our day with a song about north of Richmond, how rich people, it's gone viral. He's been offered millions of dollars to be able to buy that song and, and have him in a contract. And he's refused it. He's refused it. Why? Because he's a principle what he's living on. Well, we're Christians. We have a principle to live by. He'll offer you a million dollars to not come to services next Sunday. Would you take it? Hmm, it's next Sunday. I could come back the following week. Uh, what principle do you live by? And we need to realize there's an eternal reward. And by faith, we can see that. We trust in God. He's a, he will reward us, and we can make hard choices. And whatever choice that you make of giving up this, and giving up that pleasure, because you act upon the principles of God's word, God bless you, but Moses walked that line right way before you. And what he's saying, I lived it in my time. You can live it in your time. Thirdly, in verses 28 or verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt. He did that a long time ago in his mind. Now he forsook Egypt. His faith is just building. His choices indeed are there. He forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king. Thank you, mom and dad. Thankful, I'm thankful I was raised in that kind of family. And now he's grown up and he makes those choices. That are right. He's not, he's not fearing the wrath of the king. For what did he do? He endured. He endured. I want to pause there. Young people, you start early, and you have, a lot of you have, and starting the life of a Christian. God bless you. And we usually start in our young teenage years, some wait a little bit longer. In our younger, young teenage years, or even before we get to be 13, maybe 12. We're not a teen yet. Obey the gospel. And wonder if you're going to continue. Wonder if you're going to stay firm to that choice. I've decided to follow Jesus. And I will be baptized tonight, and we will praise you and, 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 and rejoice with you. But will you last? Will you endure? When I was baptized, a godly lady came to me and said, Jerry, it won't be a bed of roses. And it hasn't. But it hadn't been like Moses or Paul or Jesus, what they've been through. But will you endure? And you know why you can endure? Because you have faith. He had the faith to endure the wrath of the king. And he had that faith because he trusted in God. 
And we find in verse 27, because he is able to see him who is invisible. How do you do that? You can only do that by faith. Of seeing him who is visible. Have the eyes of your heart enlightened. That you indeed may understand and have that hope of heaven. But what you have here is that he sees him who is invisible. That's part of what faith does. That keeps you enduring. And it keeps you not fearing. Interesting time with, I guess the last time that Moses would have any dealing with, with Pharaoh. There was only one plague left. Now it's be the, the killing of the firstborn. But in Exodus the 10th chapter, verses 28 and 29, Pharaoh said to him, here's the wrath, the fury of Pharaoh, who's kind of had all those plagues and, oh, stop it, and you'll get to go here and go there. We'll give you freedom here and all that. And he wasn't working. Get thee from me, he says to Moses. Take heed to thyself and see my face no more. For the day that thou seest my faith, 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 you shall die. Thou shalt die. Fear. Threat. From a king who could carry it out. And Moses said, thou hast spoken well. I will see thy face again no more. Who was right? Both of them were right. Pharaoh was wrong. It wasn't Moses that died. It's Pharaoh's army. And he wouldn't see him any longer. Moses endured. And he was one that was going, has the confidence. And that relates to us. We will endure if we keep our faith strong. We keep abiding in that word. We keep reading that word. We keep putting God's word in our hearts and therefore say, I'm going to live that in my life. I'll make my choices. I will not fear what men can do to me. I will stay firm with the route that I'm taking as a Christian. All that works together. That's, that's faith. That's faith in the, in the life of, of Moses. Because Why? You're able to see the invisible God and not fear the wrath of power that they can follow through and destroy you. What can man do to you when all they can do is take your life? They can't take your soul. They can't rob you of the reward. And as you're waiting your execution, they can't take away the eyes of your heart and see him who is invisible and realize that he hasn't changed. He hasn't been destroyed. He's to help you take that final step. And your faith will allow you to deal with any of the barriers that keep you from pleasing God. And a final point. Is to wait on the Lord. In Hebrews 11, 28 and 29. By faith he kept the Passover. The sprinkling of the blood. That the destroyer of the firstborn should not touch him. He did that. He authorized the people from God's teaching. To prepare that Passover lamb. Take the blood, put on the lintel of the doorpost, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The firstborn will not be destroyed. How did he know that was going to happen? Faith. God said, do this. As he said, this is what I'm going to do. And Moses lived that part of it. You're not going to eat with, a, with leavened bread because you're not going to have time. That's why we have unleavened bread in the Lord's Supper. Because when they celebrated the Passover feast, that's what they had. And that's how he used that bread to institute the Lord's Supper that we remember today. But think about that moment. Put a little blood over a door and my first morning will be saved. We understand how that relates to Christ now. He is our Passover lamb. <laughs> Therefore, get rid of the leaven in the church. 
We know how that relates to discipline. Because it can corrupt the whole body if that's allowed to fester. So we have those relationships, but the point I want to look at is I'm waiting on him. Is this really going to happen? And that night, that angel, that angel of destruction came and did exactly what God said he would do. But that's not all of it. When he says, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea, talking about his people, as by dry land. That was a, a tough moment, too, wasn't it? You notice in Exodus, the 14th chapter, when the Egyptians were behind them and the Red Sea before them, and they're stuck. No, faith says, no, we're not stuck. Moses is leading them. We're not stuck. Moses said to them, fear ye not. Oh, that's been in his family a long time before he's born, when he was born, when he made his choices as a 40-year-old, as an 80-year-old. Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of Jehovah. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. And he was right. that they would indeed be destroyed. So what we see here is this final point of waiting on the Lord. Stand still. No, I can't stand still. We need to get out of here. They're coming and we're stuck. See the salvation of Jehovah. And the Red Sea was part of that. So they did that. And we're back to this point of the Red Sea Parting. And what he said, my people went on the, through the Red Sea on dry land. Which the Egyptians, which they essayed to do, they said to do the same thing. They were swallowed up. Stand still and see the salvation of Jehovah. Destroy the enemy. Why? You don't have to fear them. You'll see them again no more. And you were able to escape. He didn't destroy the enemy first. He could have done any way he wanted to. You pass old dry land. They see dry land, we're going to. And they run the chariots into the mud. And they were all swallowed up. And you think about that. That took faith to wait on the Lord. Now it's interesting here, by faith they... We've been talking about by faith Moses, by faith Moses, by faith Moses. What does this tell you about leadership of faith? Where you look at the life of Moses and realize that he's the one that's encouraging them and exhorting them and his way is working. And he was able to get a people who were afraid, who were in immobilized and fearful to stand still and see the salvation Jehovah will do. And so they pass through the Red Sea. If these walls of the Red Sea water were to open up, would, you, would your little child like to run through that? <laughs> I don't know if as a little child I would. I'm thinking they're coming down any moment, but that's the pessimist I am at eight years old or five years old. That still took great courage. It's never happened before. But you're trusting in God. This is your salvation. And then to look back and see the dead bodies, all the folk to the top, and they're saved. Now the story about Moses' life ends here. In this text. Next thing we see is the walls of Jericho falling down. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down. But Moses would lead a generation. And by faith, by faith, by faith. From the time of his birth. 
to the time that he's grown, to the time now he has the following of people who as a leader leading the way of God is commendable, you can live a life like that. While we wait on the Lord. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 4, he didn't want to just be found naked. All this tent is decaying, it's going to be struck down. But I don't want to remain naked, just with the Spirit. He was looking that what is mortal may be swallowed up of life. It's not that I've escaped this body, and I'm in the spirit world, and I'm in a place of comfort maybe, and we are if we're God's people. No, I'm waiting on something else because that's the promise of God. Faith does that. And so what your faith does, here I am in a, a body, it's a tent, it's dissolving, but I got something far greater, a body. Not just a spirit, a body that was subject to death and no longer. What are you doing about that now? You're waiting for that. I'm waiting for that. And whether you're young or old, you ought to be waiting for that. Because that's the promise ahead of you. You want to see the salvation from the grave? Stand still and realize that God has the power to do that and he's promised to do that. And what a moment that he'll be changing me. I'll be clothed with immortality. I'll be swallowed up with life forevermore. And eternity in heaven is the reward we're waiting for. And we see him promise that that we can't see with our fleshly eyes. But we look forward to that reward and we have the confidence that we will be there in the end to receive that reward. What is it? It's because of faith. It's because of faith. We can apply it in our families. We can apply it when we're teenagers, making choices to serve God. Well, we last, yes, yeah, because we're going to have a faith that endures. And we're able to look forward to the reward that keeps us faithful even to the end. We're seeing him who's invisible. We make choices that the world says that's asinine. No, so that's what it means to be faithful. And we will not fear. We'll keep doing what God says do. I think Moses' life of faith has a lot to do with you and me in our faith. And he just one of the cloud of witnesses that said, I live that life. You can too. As we look to Jesus. And we see that he looked forward to the joy of waiting for him. He didn't escape the cross. He made a choice eternally. That's where I'm going. That's the will of the Father. That he looked down upon the shame of the cross. He embraced it. To die upon the cross. And have the joys of heaven waiting him. We should follow our elders as they lead us in the paths of righteousness and realize they have an influence on us. See how they depart this life. We can look at Moses' example and all the rest in Hebrews 11 and relate that to our lives like we've done tonight. We can do that and realize that now I'm looking to Jesus and exactly I will follow so he's the author and the perfecter of my faith. Focus on him. You'll never regret that. He'll give you a faith to not fear the wrath of the king or the commandment of things that hurt our cause. You will not fear them because indeed you can see him who is invisible. That's the one you serve. All those things will be a part of your life, whether you're young or whether you're old. But if you haven't started that life, why don't you obey the gospel? Have an obedience of faith that Paul said in the first part of Romans, at the last of Romans, is what this gospel is all about. Salvation 
It's unto the obedience of faith. Do you trust God to promise you salvation from sin? Then why don't you be baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins? Do you promise God to promise you the redemption from the grave? Why don't become a Christian so your life, your, your body could be swallowed up with immortality and be swallowed up in victory and forevermore and be able to sing that song that we sing we realize I'm part of that group and willing to take on the reproaches of Christ like they say Moses was willing to do in his time with the people of God. God said this relates to you and me. Why not obey the gospel now as we stand and as we sing?